Hi folks, welcome to a new Hobby Nightmare. It is Monday. Hope you're all having a wonderful time. So we just did our prize draw yesterday. Our winner has already contacted me. I'll be emailing you either today or tomorrow to get some details from you to give you your prize. The prize was £50 worth of models from Composite Games. Next month, as in the 6th of September, or not the 6th of September, what date are we doing it on? Let me have a look down. It's the first Sunday of the month, so the 3rd of September. That is Sunday the 3rd of September is our next prize draw, and it will be for £100 of free models from Composite Games. That is the biggest prize we have done on the channel yet. £100 of free models from Composite Games will be the prize on our next prize draw. The second prize will be a Repulsor Battle Tank, the Primara Space Marine Repulsor Battle Tank. Either of those two prizes sent directly to your door, even if I have to pay for the shipping myself, it will be sent directly to your door. If you want to be involved in that prize draw, all you need to do is be a patron or a member of the channel. Each time you are subscribed to one of those things, it gets you one entry into the prize draw. This is probably the best chance you're going to have to win a prize such as this, because we only have like 150, 200 people in the prize draw any any one time. So, head on in, have some fun, support the channel, and uh, yeah, good luck with the rest of your models. And congratulations to you uh, for winning that prize yesterday. I think it was Nocturne Bartholomew Nocturne, I think. So congratulations to you for doing that. You absolutely wonderful person. You 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 signed up and you won. So good good luck good luck to you. Yeah, Bartholomew Nocturne. Well done, mate. Well done. So this is New Look Hobby Nightmares. So these will be about the hobby on Mondays and Wednesdays, and on Fridays they will be a bit more esoteric, a bit more all over the place. But we'll see. We'll see how we go. Rob De Nob says Hello from the deserts of the West. I have a story that goes through some nightmares, but ultimately ends on a good note. In my local scene, I go by Rob the Knob. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think um, in, the, in the UK that might have a different connotation. And I find a hilarious nickname given to me by a good friend who, while attending Games Workshop's grand narrative event in November of 22. As you can guess, I play Orcs, and it's the army I've played the most by far since I began my hobby journey in the beginning of 6th edition. About 11 years ago now. It wasn't my first army, but it's for sure my first true love. Our journey begins with the end of my Magic the Gathering career. I had been playing Magic for a couple of years at a friendly local game store, right out of high school, at the age of 18, and always showed up on weekends to test a new deck. I had recently dis uh, discovered different deck types on the internet and saw something called a Tron deck. I thought it was the coolest thing, being a colourless deck and all. Almost felt like it was a uh, the White Ranger from Power Rangers or something. I finally get to play this deck after assembling it for weeks against a regular who had a whole suitcase filled with decks of all types, from mill decks to the kind that, that beat you with infect tokens or whatever. This gentleman had been someone that was there most weeks, and he looked about in his late 30s if I had to guess. We ended up playing each other seeing as we were the first ones at the store that weekend, and what ensued was a series of games where I had won several in a row, each win against a different deck he pulled from his suitcase until he finally won on his 8th try. The whole while he had become more and more agitated to the point that on finally beating me he began to pipe off angrily about how miserable my deck was and how it was a net list, as in an internet done list. Me, an 18 year old kid at the time, said nothing because I, I didn't realise he was seriously that mad and I didn't know that getting a, lit, a, nest, uh, sorry, a deck from the internet was a bad thing. I just thought it would be a fun deck to try and call the planes, the planeswalker look neat. I began to pack up my things and set to leave the store because I was not going to take that really. The whole time he kept talking trash to me until I headed out the door. I'm not afraid of confrontation. I think what had me in shock was that it happened in a nerd store that I considered a place I could relax and have fun without judgement. I realised I needed a new hobby and while a friend of mine and I played a board game that following week, we saw a 40k poster on the wall. I saw a space marine riding a thunderwolf and thought it was badass. I know, 
Space Wolves player, but I think you you would enjoy a game against me. I play them like uh, like you play your Astral Blades. Good lad. He means narratively, by the way. I play narrative games. So I, I play rule of cool games. I don't really play uh, competitive games. Not that I judge you for playing that way if you do. It's up to you. This would lead me to sell my MTG cards. Getting over $1,000 from them and using that to purchase my first 40k army, which of course was Space Marines. I take these Marines into my first matches of weekly pickup games and eventually my first tournament. I'm really sorry that happened to you. I'm just going to take a quick break there and so I can have a sip of tea. But I'm really sorry that happened to you that you were chased out of your hobby, basically, by some douche. That's horrible. You know, I, I, I honestly don't get how... Whenever I start getting my hackles up, unless somebody's cheating, if I think somebody's cheating, then I get honestly annoyed. But if, if, if I'm not having very good luck that day, I just remember it's a game of toy soldiers and, and back away slowly from my, from my anger, from my temper. Alright, I remember my first 40k game against people I had never met before, and it was a 2v2. These two guys were veterans of the hobby, and I was paired with a good friend from high school who got me into 40k at the time after seeing after after suggesting it to him. Okay, let's call the first one Brian. Sorry, let's call the first one Brain, and the second dude Pinky. Okay, Brain and Pinky were both avid Chaos players while my friend and myself had space marines and orcs. We were greener than green though, and thought playing against people who knew the hobby would help set us up to learn more. Wrong, yeah. After the first two turns, we got our first taste of the tryhards in 40k. Many things happened, such as Br Brain complaining that my land raider was Forge World, it was Achilles, and I didn't know that Forge World was OP at the time, but I'm a new player, and it's not like I was going to win anyway which he'd destroy anyway using his, his obliterators on turn 1, Deep Strike. 6th um, edition, you can't Deep Strike on turn 1. If this is 6th edition. I'm pretty sure. People in the comments will, will be able to tell me because there are there are rule noggins in my, in my community. But, uh... Mm. I'm pretty sure you can't Deep Strike at the top of turn 1. Um, even in 7th edition you couldn't do that. I'm pretty sure. There was another instance in this match where my friend advanced his orc boys under the impression that he could still charge. So when it came to declare said charge, our opponent, Bri uh, Brain, said no. That's an illegal move. My friend asked if he could take the move back because he didn't know, and Brain said no. <sighs> There's a lot to Pinky as well, such as always being in Brain's ass. But we're focusing on Brain today. Despite all the nonsense in the first match, I think I just enjoyed the hobby. Uh, I didn't care about the people across the table and enough for them to spoil it for me. And I didn't spoil it for my friend either. Well, good for you. Good for you. If I'm in a casual game, this is the kind of thing, right? I'll put somebody on the don't play list. If I'm in a casual game and I make an honest mistake and, and we haven't moved on yet, do you know what I mean? I've made the move, we haven't moved on yet in the game. And, and I realise I've made a mistake because my friend, because my, my guy goes, oh, you can't charge that. You know, or, or, or says something like that, like that. We haven't changed the, the turn yet. We changed the, the, the phase, but not the turn. I'd say, oh, oh shit, I didn't realise that. Can I take that back then? In a narrative game, you say, sure, man, why not? That's what you say in a narrative game. If you're the kind of guy in a narrative game who says, uh, absolutely not, then I'd be like, okay, you're now on the no playlist in my head. You're on the no playlist. That's just where you are, and you're going to stay there as well. Um, if you've been a dick already, this might be the time where I go, uh, mm, yeah, no. No, I, I think I'm, I'm going to stop playing here and move on. Move on to somebody else. You're not wasting my time. Anyway. This would lead me to practice 40k matches weekly. I had become obsessed, and always used my savings to try a new army or sell one I had to try another. At this point in time, 40k wasn't cheap, but it was nowhere near as expensive as it is now. I eventually got to Orcs. I'd never had this much fun until I played Orcs. It ranged from amazing moments such as a battle wagon blowing up in the enemy lines of Gene Stealer cults and killing all five of their characters in one go, or doing it again against Thousand Sons and all of their rubrics would just die out of, out of sheer random luck. 
I attended LVO, the Las Vegas Open, with 90 boys in my first ever large event, where the last boy out of the 30, out of 30 in a blob, chucked a stick bomb up at a Drukhari plane with one wound left, and ended up killing it and making it explode. The boy died in the explosion as it landed on him, but what a glorious death. <laughs> That's the most orc thing I've ever seen. I love orcs, man. Orcs in 40k are the business. They're just so fun. You can't lose with orcs. You literally... If you lose, good. It was a good fight. If you win, good. It was a good fight. It doesn't matter either way. As long as good stuff happens on the tabletop. Oh, man. Narrative players and orcs get along so well. We just do. We just we love each other very much. In the same event, I had a war boss who took three damage from six attacks from a gallant Imperial Knight and saved them all on a six foot and a six foot invulnerable save before going on and killing that same knight in one round of combat with his killer claw. These epic moments were what I cared about the most from the hobby. Organic stories you made, win or lose. Well, I'm glad you, you found a way to enjoy the hobby. I don't think everybody should have to go through several armies before they find their moment, though. Just saying. Don't get it too twisted, though. As much as I love narrative, I really love competition. I'd eventually run into Brain two more times. And yes, he never changed. In the first rematch, it was a local event where he'd lie about the Tyranid rule, Power of the Hive Mind, to illegally deep strike a unit without the deep strike keyword. However, at this point, I was quite familiar with 40k rules, and asked him to show me, where he promptly looked me in the eyes and said, uh, never mind. The second time I played his Tyranids, I rolled him, and I believe that was his last 40k match because I never saw him again or saw him play at an event again after that, probably because he realised he wasn't the best in our small pond anymore. I'm not saying I'm the best, but he wouldn't auto win tournaments from then on. Brain would have always won the local tournaments before and stack up all the store credit to brag about it. He never even spent it. He'd also complain to the judge when an opponent had a horribly broken rule like reroll saves while he was running the horrendously broken Eldar. So long, Brain. I'm glad you moved on to Star Wars spaceships or whatever it's called. <laughs> You're such a... You are such a fucking troll. I like it. I like it. Fast forward to this year of 2023, where two friendly local game stores have, have set up qualifier tournaments. Three, in fact, where the first place winner in each would be on one five-man team, while the highest point scored from the three events would fill up the fourth and fifth spots, respectively. This five-man team was set to be the best five qualified against the other friendly local game stores top five. The three qualifiers were down with, with done, with, sorry, we're done with 9th edition rules, where your boy would win the second qualifier after claiming that second slot on the team. When it came to the time for the 5v5 team championship itself, our team would eventually win, in spite of having to learn a whole new edition, the 10th edition, for that game. A little caveat, it was supposed to be a 3 round event, but the opposing team called it quits after the second match, realising they couldn't catch up in wins. I was happy we won, but I was disappointed I didn't get to play against those they considered to be their best players. I wouldn't be disappointed for too long, because in two weeks' time, there'd be one more event where one of their best players would attend. Well, there's nothing wrong with setting up another game away from that event, if you really want to play people, dude. Every tournament played in our pond over the past 20 plus years, and this one was no different. Okay. Sorry, hang on. I'll read that again, me being ridiculous. Every tournament every tournament played in our, in our pond has over 20 plus players, and this one was no different. It was just in another city. This is where I would play three wonderful opponents. My first was against a Blood Angel player playing his very first game of 10th. Upon telling me this, I let him know my opinions on his list, such as setting his Sanguinary Guard out in the Storm Raven, otherwise he wouldn't get to realistically play them until turn 3, and by then, most games are usually over at this level. He'd agree, but still wanted to deep strike them, despite me suggesting that he, he could post them up in a in LOS terrain, I don't know what that means, um, line of sight blocking terrain is that? Yeah? And just get a better charge. 
No worries, I thought, because I didn't want to play his army for him, of course. He'd eventually deep strike those sanguinary guard, only to fail the charge out of deep strike, of course. He looked at me and said, an eight. I failed. I told him, nah man, looks like a nine to me. He smiled and pushed his sanguinary guard into combat where they were promptly eaten by my Squigasaur. <laughs> you are such a dick. But you're a dick in a good way because he wanted to do that. You know, he, he wanted to charge and have his moment. But hey, he wanted to charge it. We all talked about the books of the, uh, we, we talked about the books of the Blood Angels and how badass I found Dante and Gabriel Seth. And of course, the best Primarch, Sanguinius. My second match was against a local veteran player running his salamanders. He's a fantastic painter, a solid opponent and a joy to play against. The great thing about him is that he is honest and upfront about everything, including intentions of movement and what he is wanting to do. I always tell my opponents if they ever want to take a move back. They, ca they absolutely can, as long as it's not anything that affects dice rolls already done from the last phase. But if you roll an advance roll, then realise, wait, I didn't mean to do that, no worries, just say then that they're not advanced, they haven't moved. I won't let a stone take my glory. That, that, that's a really good... That, yes, mate, yes, that, that is the... That is the... That is how you should look at games. If you've ever seen the movie Troy, where Hector and Achilles are fighting, right? And Hector, like, steps backwards, trips over a stone, and falls over. And Achilles, instead of killing him, says, Get up, Prince of Troy. Get up. I won't let a stone take my glory. Get up. Right? That's how you should play all of these games. Okay? Let the other... Give the other person all of the heads up that they need. Give the other person all of the the um the politeness that they need to do their moves and to, to give you their best because if you're not beating somebody at their best what's the point right great attitude mate i won't let a stone take my glory exactly exactly i want you at your best if you want to beat me at a tournament get better that's the great that's the best attitude to to, to have at a tournament that's a fucking big bollock attitude to have at a tournament mate is to be like, yeah, I don't care about winning, because if I win and you haven't played your best, or or you got rules wrong and weren't allowed to to redo them, you know, then what's the point? I haven't played you at your best. Be at your best. That's great, mate. Help help others around you play their best. Good lad. In this match, I had a knob kill a redemptor dreadnought, taking off his last four wounds. Hilariously cool. My last match was against the enemy team's best player. At long last, I get to fight these giant demon models and crump something massive. It was a glorious match that came down to the wire where I had just a bit more orc boys to win on mission points. The highlight for me was when Gaskull and his bully boys beat down Shal Shalaxi Hellbane. What a match. When it came time for the placings, I scored on all uh, a, th a 300 on all points, putting me in first place. I was then handed the first place prize, a brand new Leviathan 10th edition box set. What a prize. When it was handed to me, I realised this was it. This was something I've always wanted to do. I didn't want this box or need it. I would take this box and set and, set and approach a young man and his friend. They were 14 or 16 by the looks of it. I'm, I'm kind of bad with guessing ages. They had, come, they had come in in about last place, or around there anyway, but their armies were beautifully painted. One had a fully flamed out Salamander's army, while the other had a Farsight army. I know I couldn't paint like this when I was their age. I let the Salamander kid know I wanted him to have this box and split it with his friend. They could add to their legion or try a new army. The reactions on these kids' faces was everything. When I handed it over, their faces lit, lit up like crazy. They quickly went to a table and began going through the box like a couple of mad men. The store owner upon seeing this went to the back and brought out some old metal orc models which included the old metal orc knobs, Gretchen and various other little kits. I asked him how much he wanted for them, to which he proceeded to say, take what you want dude, I don't need them. I made out with five metal knobs, three metal Gretchen and four uh, metal bomb squigs and various other orc models. Super neat. Yeah, dude, and I bet you that those will hold more pride of place in your collection. 
than anything that you buy off the store shelf, even if they look worse because they're the metal models, do you know what I mean? They will, they will feel better to you than actually, you know, having new models. That, that's great, because you can always look at them and go, I got them because I was a good guy and I helped somebody out in the hobby. That That's just such a... That's cool, dude. Well done, man. Anyways, thanks for reading. Remember to use chess clocks always in a, in a tournament. Use Tabletop Battles app and don't be afraid to ask your opponent to show you their rules. Being respectful to others says a lot more about you than it does to the rude pissants of this world. Be good, everyone. Okay, thanks. Bye. Cheers, mate. What a what a lovely, a lovely set of anecdotes there. Lovely set of stories. That's what Hobby Nightmares is all about. I love it. Excellent. So, story number two comes from Graceless Punk. I'm going to keep these to two Hobby Nightmares per video. Because I think we're getting towards two hours now in some videos and it's getting too much, right? So, two Hobby Nightmares per video. I, I am running low. I have like eight or nine left, so send them in. Keep sending them in. Let's have some fun. Graceless Punk says, Yo North. Bit of a change of pace for this one, as this Hobby Nightmare just happened a few weeks ago. I'm new to the hobby. I'm 23, and to be honest, as a lady, I was a bit put off by some of the glances you get in the local hobby store here. But hey, when I saw Angron and was told his backstory by a staff member one rainy summer Tuesday when I headed in there to have a look around, I walked home to devour all, all the lore videos that I could. It's so easy to get involved in the lore these days thanks to YouTube. It's amazing. Yeah, I, I agree. Completely agree. That is, uh, it, it is far easier now. You have no idea how good you have it. If you're starting 40k now, there is a treasure trove of lore on YouTube that's so easy to get into and accessible. Mate, you're never going to leave. And lore YouTubers should be paid. I'm telling you now. They should be paid by Games Workshop on some level. I'm, I'm being honest. Like, like They do more to get people into the hobby than most of these. Most of the people who watch battle rep videos or painting videos were people already in the hobby, right? But a good percentage of the people watching lore videos are either not in the hobby yet, or interested in it, or being, or in the process of being indoctrinated into it, right? That those are the guys who are building the hobby. I'm telling you now. That's my opinion, but I'm telling you now. That's who those. That's who they are. I was set on world eaters when finding just how tragic Angron's backstory really was, and how, and how the emperor just pushed him into being what he was when he found them broken and beyond repair. Rather than throwing a good tool away. Yeah, that's, that's cool. It really shows the Emperor's dual modes when it comes to his sons. The first fact is that he, is that he loves them as sons. He does. The second is that he will sacrifice them in a second if it means bettering humanity. Nobody is above such a sacrifice not even the Emperor, which is why he's so ruthless. I never thought about it that way. Yeah, the Emperor expects a, expects a lot out of everybody, but maybe that's because he has sons and he's willing to give them up in a second. So if he can do that, why can't you? I, that's a very, yeah, a very good way of looking at it. I think a lot of people read some of the Emperor's harsher treatment of Lorgar and other traitor Primarchs as dumb writing. But when you look at it through this lens, it really makes sense. Yeah, maybe the Emperor leans into it. So if he sees one of, one of his sons going wayward, he'll try and correct him. But if they're beyond repair, or if it'll take too long to correct their course, he just pushes them down that place. Because he thinks, well, you can be useful as that. That's fine, be useful. Same same with Conrad Kurz, right? Well, he's useful. Fuck it, you know? And with Angron, he's broken. He's not what he's supposed to be, but fuck it, he's useful. Yeah, I get it. Anyway, look at how I went off there. I love the lore. Yeah, yeah, you did. So I decided to do World Eaters, but I'm not a huge fan of red as a colour. Neither am I. Instead, I went with the white and blue look and made my World Eaters lost in the warp during the heresy or just before the heresy. They come out to find everything gone to shit. They don't even have the butcher's nails. They become a roaming warband holding to the World Eater's true colour scheme, and they hunt their old kin down one by one, warband by warband. 
because, well, it's a good fight. So, I buy lots of corn guys from Age of, Sig from Age of Sigmar. I get lots of Primoris Assault Intercessors and head to work with Hobby Chain, Chain Axes and all the blood for the blood god I can buy. In brackets, yes, there is an actual paint. I fucking love this hobby. <laughs> I know it's an actual paint, but I love the fact that you're, you're really getting into, getting into mode here. The warband is coming along really well in terms of models built. They look amazing. I'll send a pic on Monday when I'm, when I'm not on a train. I undercoat my models light grey, as it's a lot easier to paint white over than uncover mistakes up. Then, I get painting the rest. One day, I head into the local game store, and the models are coming along very well. One or two people stop to hear my lore and compliment me on my writing, on, sorry, on my painting. A few even offer a few pointers on painting white and say I have metaphorical balls for choosing a pure white army as my first army. By the end of the day, I had a lot of tips on weathering with deep browns and flicking blood onto my, model, onto my models with my brush rather than painting it to mimic blood splatter. That's good. <clears throat> the day is going well until Jeff. Jeff heads over. He has a corn t-shirt on, glasses, and a very smug look on his face that constantly looks as if, it, as if he's just won an, an Olympic gold or something. He says a lot of self-congratulatory things, so I am hearing, as he speaks to other people, telling them that, hey, the game you just played was epic. I just played a game just like that, where I smashed another World Eater Eaters player because they dared say that they could play Angron's boys better than me. Jesus Christ. At this point, I want to get out of there before he sees my models. <laughs> yeah, you see what's coming. So I start packing up my models. Then he catches a look at my force and says, Oh no. And says, What the hell? How are you painting those? He walks over and stands over me. Um, as world eaters, I ask. He shakes his head. Oh my god, so much wrong here. World Eaters are red in the law. That's just how it is. You're painting a Horus Heresy scheme on a 40k army. Not only that, these are 40k models and Space Marine models at that. Not corn at all. Maybe you should call them something else. I was a little gobsmacked. Who the hell was this cretin? <laughs> I love that word. Who the hell was this cretin to tell me all of this? If he'd have said this with a normal tone, I'd have taken it as some honest feedback, even if it is a bit rude. His tone was head patting, condescending, hostile, and treating me like I was a fucking moron. Being new to the hobby, though, I just shrugged and thought, um, well, yeah, maybe I did these wrong and should take his suggestion on board. Then, Mike the manager heads over and says the most brutal thing I think I've ever heard. Okay. <laughs> oh, dear me. Right, okay. I'm going to have to compose myself here. Compose myself. Take a sip of tea. Then, Mike the manager heads over and says the most brutal thing I think I've ever heard. Fuck off, Jeff. <laughs> I'm sure there are some windows that need licking somewhere, mate. He stands in front of Jeff, blocking his view of me. He turns round to me. Dude, your world eaters are awesome. Don't let anybody tell you their shit just because they don't like the law you went with. Paint your models your way, all right? That's the hobby. And before you accuse him of white knighting, Mike is gay. Like, really gay. Like, boyfriend kisses him goodbye in front of other folks gay. I know a lot of straight couples who won't even do that in front of people they don't know. Jeff stumbles off as the chuckles rain down on him from, from uh, all around the shop. He plays a few games that night, but has never come over to me to give me unwanted advice again. I love this hobby. <laughs> love you, Grace. All's well that ends well. 
I know this person's in Britain because that is such a British put down. Just leading with fuck off. <laughs> like, Americans don't do that in general. They don't say, they say, they say, um, oh, fuck you, or something like that. Yeah, they don't, they don't say fuck off, mate. Like, straight away, do you know what I mean? Like, that, that is such a. And licking windows is a pretty British insult as well. That's. Oh, man. Oh, man. That, that's not PC at all, but it is fucking funny. Anyway, I love you all a long time. I will speak to you tomorrow, uh, where I'm going to be discussing hobby indecision. It is a rant very close to my heart. It really is. It is the main bugbear of my hobby life, and I finally get to do a video on it. So I'll speak to you tomorrow. Love you a long time. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you then. Have a good one. Bye.